Welcome to the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms rules video. My name is Nelson. And I'm Serge. Let's go over the new mechanics. Dungeons are a new card type. They don't have the traditional magic back, and they don't get shuffled into or drawn from your library. Instead, they start outside the game and are brought into the command zone when needed. Some cards will tell you to venture into the dungeon. If you aren't in a dungeon, put a dungeon card you own into the command zone and put a venture marker into the first room. Do I need a specific item for a venture marker? Nope. You can use any item, such as a coin, dice, or mini, to track which room you're in. The next time you venture into the dungeon, you'll move into the next room. You can only move down. You can't backtrack or move sideways. If there is more than one room you can move into, you choose which way to go. Every room has a triggered ability. When you enter the room, the trigger will be placed on the stack. After you move into the last room and that room's ability resolves, the dungeon leaves the game and you've completed it! Yay! When instructed to venture again, you start over in the first room of a dungeon. This can be a new one, or even the same dungeon you just completed. There are three dungeons in the set. For limited events, you can play with dungeons even if they're not in your card pool. Players will have access to all three dungeons at all times. Dungeon cards begin outside the game and can only be brought into the game by cards that say, Venture into the dungeon. The player venturing into the dungeon chooses which dungeon they will venture into. If you somehow venture into the dungeon while a room's ability is on the stack, you will continue on in the dungeon. If you're already in the last room, complete that dungeon and start a new one. Whenever a player ventures into the dungeon, no player can respond until after that player has selected which dungeon to enter and its first room ability has triggered. It wouldn't be D&D &D if you couldn't pick your favorite class. This set introduces a new enchantment type, Class, which allows you to level up and gain additional abilities. You can even multi-class. Each class has five abilities. The three in the major sections of its text box are class abilities. Class abilities can be static, activated, or triggered abilities. The other two are level abilities, one activated ability to advance the class to level two and another to advance the class to level 3. Each class starts at level 1. You can activate the level ability up to level 2, and then after that, level 3. You have to level up in order, and you can't skip levels. Wait, can I just spam the same level up over and over for value? No, you can't go back just to get more value out of a triggered ability. Gaining a level uses the stack and can be responded to. When you level up, you keep your previous level abilities. You can multi-class, or even control multiple class enchantments of the same class. Each class permanent tracks its own levels separately. Some class cards have an effect that increases when more are under your control. For example, if you have multiple Barbarian class cards, you roll that many additional dice and ignore that many of the lowest rolls. Dice rolling is finally here. Um... In blackboarded magic. <sighs> Fine. A lot of cards in this set rely on dice rolling. These cards will instruct you to roll dice and then tell you what to do based on the outcome. An ability that tells you to roll a die will also specify what to do with the result of that roll. Most often, this is in the form of a results table in the card text. The instruction to roll a die and the effect that occurs because of the result are all part of the same ability. Players do not get the chance to respond to the ability after knowing the result of the roll. An effect that says choose a target, then roll a d20 or similar, still uses the normal process of putting an ability on the stack and resolving it. Choosing targets is part of putting the ability on the stack, and rolling the d20 happens later as the ability resolves. Some effects may modify the result of a die roll. This may be the part of the instruction to roll a die, or it may come from other cards. Anything that references the result of a die roll is looking for the result after these modifications. Anything that is looking for the natural result is looking for the number shown on the face of the die before these modifications. Some effects instruct you to roll again. This uses the same number and type of dice as the original roll, and that roll will use the same set of possible outcomes. Some abilities replace rolling a die with rolling extra dice and ignoring the lowest roll. The ignored rolls are not considered for the effect that instructed you to roll a die and do not cause abilities to trigger. For all intents and purposes, once you determine which dice count, the extra dice were never rolled. We all know math is for blockers, but now they've added a new mechanic that requires the attacker to do math? 
You only have to count to six. But I only have five fingers. Huh. Pack tactics is an ability word that checks if you attacked along with creatures with total power six or greater. A creature's pack tactics ability won't trigger if that creature doesn't attack, even if you attack with other creatures with total power six or greater. Once a pack tactics ability triggers, it doesn't matter what happens to the attacking creatures. The ability will resolve even if some or all of those creatures leave the battlefield in response, or if their total power falls below six. A pack tactics ability considers the total power of the creatures at the moment you attack with them. If there are any static abilities increasing a creature's power as long as it's attacking, those bonuses will count. However, if a creature has a triggered ability that increases its power whenever it attacks, that bonus will not count. Ability words have been around for a long time. They're italicized words that appear on cards and are used to add flavor or themes to a set. The classic example is Landfall. As much as I love Landfall, it's just a normal triggered ability that happens whenever a land enters the battlefield. Adventures in the Forgotten Realms heavily uses flavor words to add character to many of the choices you'll be making when playing a game. In some cases, they precede triggered or activated abilities on a card. Flavor words, like ability words, don't have a rules meaning. That's it for the rules. Thanks for watching.